All right, it's another episode of Stand Tall. Welcome, welcome. It is January 18th. We're in the Art of War, Chapter 6, Verse 20. Um, actually, 19 and 20. I had to do a little bit of reading ahead. Um, so yeah, 19. Knowing the place and time of the coming battle, we may concentrate from the greatest distances in order to fight. Uh, that's because we are doing 18 and 19 yesterday, but 19 is part of 20 in the alternate translation. 20. But if neither time nor place be known, then the left wing will be impotent to succor the right, and the right equally impotent to succor the left, the van unable to relieve the rear, or the rear to support the van. How much more so if the furthest portions of the army or anything under a hundred li apart, and even the nearest, are separated by several li? Okay. So this is why it's important to have an alternate translation, because those are some big words and silly words that we don't normally hear uh, or use today. Uh, so without actually having to use the internet to look them up, we'll just hop over here to an alternate translation and see what we can come out with. Master Sun says, So if you know the place and time of a battle, you can join the fight from a thousand miles away. If you do not know the place and time of battle, then your left flank cannot save your right, and your right cannot save your left. Your vanguard cannot save your rear guard, and your rear guard cannot save your vanguard, even in a short range of a few to a few dozen miles. Do you says to this, the ancient philosopher Master Guan said, go forth armed without determining strategy and you will destroy yourself in battle. So knowing things ahead of time. So we say that trying to have insight to see and foresight and to plan ahead. And I mean, that is kind of like the mark of any good entrepreneur or investor uh, or anyone who's adaptable in life at all is to basically look and analyze the world based on the knowledge and information you have and extrapolate what decisions you're going to make or have to make 5, 10, 20, 30 years from now. And so it's with that long range sight that gives us the ability to not rush into battle of life and succumb, right? Because whenever you move with haste and you don't plan ahead, you can end up in bad spots, places you don't want to be. Let's go to January 18th. Out of the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hansel. Pass through this brief patch of time titled See the World Like a Poet and an Artist. Pass through this brief patch of time in harmony with nature and come to your final resting place graciously. Just as a ripened olive might drop, praising the earth that nourished it and grateful to the tree that gave it growth. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 4.48.2 there are some stunningly beautiful turns of phrase in Marcus's meditation. A surprising treat considering the intended audience just himself. In one passage, he praises the charm and allure of nature's process. The stalks of ripe grain bending low, the frowning brow of the lion, and the foam dripping from the boar's mouth. We should thank private rhetoric teacher Marcus Cornelius Fronto for the imagery in the vivid passages. Fronto, widely considered to be Rome's best orator besides Cicero, was chosen by Marcus's adopted father to teach Marcus to think, write, and speak. More than just pretty phrases, they gave him, and now us, a powerful perspective on ordinarily or seemingly unbeautiful events. It takes an artist's eye to see that the end of life is not unlike a ripe fruit falling from its tree. It takes a poet to notice the way baking bread splits and places in those cracks. While not intended in the baker's art, catch our eye and serve and stir our appetite and find a meditation in them. There is clarity and joy in seeing what others can't see, and finding grace and harmony in places that overlook, uh, that are overlooked by others. Isn't that far better than seeing the world as some dark place? All right, so that's powerful for me, um, because it does involve, like Sun Tzu says, some foresight and some seeing ahead and some extrapolations, because it takes a little bit of an art in order to do that. It takes a little bit of an artistic mind uh, to, to put those things together in such a way. And so, knowing that you might see things differently doesn't mean that being different is bad. Being different can be a really good thing, especially in this case, uh, just like Sun Tzu is saying, because while all of those people who aren't like you and see things differently from you um, might not be able to to know where the battle is like you are and so 
instead of being saddened or disheartened because you don't know what decision to make. Maybe your decision has made itself known and you know what you need to do. You just haven't crossed the line of in the time in your timeline of knowing and looking back and having hindsight be 2020 and realizing that things happen for a reason, etc. And so that's why it takes a little bit of an artistic spark to bring yourself joy and have that ability to do so through stoicism and knowing that the things you're seeing, while sometimes might be terrifying, stir movement and action and other parts of your, your being and your psyche and you bring to life other things and you bring them to fruition.